now like to introduce the team from the London Living Lab to finish off our trilogy of uh, connected and autonomous vehicles presentations. Great, thanks very much. We've, just, we've heard from PA Consulting about uh, future uh, mobility options and, and what uh, uh, transport solutions might look like in the future and, and the sorts of timescales that those are, are going to come in. Um, we've, we've just heard from Tim about auto drive and, and the, um, the work of one of the cities in the UK that, that is uh, taking autonomous vehicles into public environments and, and getting uh, feedback from those environments and really kind of starting to learn about the complexities of, of introducing these, uh, these technologies. Uh, what we've been doing um, with our partners at uh, Cisco and Costain and, and a number of others that I'll come on to um, over the last uh, nine months or so is producing a vision around uh, a smart mobility living lab uh, based in London in which the technologies that we've been hearing about and the challenges around deployment that we've been hearing about can really be investigated and tested, understood. So that, that actually the, the factors that lie in between where we are today with the technology level that we have and, and the, uh, where, where we envisage we might get to with the deployment of uh, connected and autonomous vehicle solutions uh, can be addressed within a controlled environment where we're able to give users exposure to the technologies where we're able to learn quickly around the, the challenges of deployment um, and create the, the understanding around how we actually approve, validate, uh, and, and essentially uh, get to a point where we can confidently uh, deploy, let uh, autonomous vehicles loose into the real world environment. You know, we're starting from a position where you know, we, we all live a, a certain type of a connected life at the moment. Um, and, and building on the, 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 the smart connectivity that we all enjoy from our smartphones. But increasingly, within a transport sense, we're expecting our mobility to be connected. We've heard about how uh, the vehicle technologies are becoming connected. Our um, capability to um, control the, the city environment, the smart city, uh, is also connected via, via these uh, methods as well. Um, and as we start to bring these technologies into the real world, we're also looking up here um, in the top corner at connected validation, so how we can use the data sources through deploying these technologies into the real world to actually improve the speed at which we can actually validate and approve uh, these types of systems. And, and that really is at the heart of, of, of what we're uh, looking to achieve within uh, the Smart Mobility Living Lab in London. Now the, the Smart Mobility Living Lab is, is really born out of, firstly, a consultation uh, that was uh, driven by the Department for Transport last year, um, out of which a recommendation was that uh, a number of uh, uh, test beds for uh, autonomous vehicles are created within the UK and a, and a, and a combined or a, or a joined up ecosystem of test beds uh, is created with a, an investment from the, uh, from the Treasury. And last year, 100 million was made uh, available from the Treasury for investment in these test beds. And as I say, you know, nine months later, we're, or, or a year later, we're at a point where two public test beds have been appointed uh, or identified by uh, government as, as getting the go-ahead, uh, together with two uh, off-road test beds um, to be, as I say, linked together, really, in a, in a kind of cohesive and, and, and joined-up way to provide a, a testing ecosystem that really differentiates the UK on an international stage uh, for uh, testing and evaluation of, of automated vehicles. So from a TRL point of view, we're leading this, um, uh, this, this test bed in London, and it's building on um, work that we've been doing for a number of years, so around the Gateway Project, around uh, Move UK, which is a, a project which is looking at how to validate uh, uh, automated technologies, um, a project called Atlas, where we've been looking at the way that the data that is captured by uh, automated vehicles can be used uh, to uh, help our um, information sources used within a smart city environment. And also things like connected signals, how do we use new methodologies for data analysis and, and, and uh, machine learning to improve our algorithms around uh, smart city control and, and um, uh, traffic signal performance. And that's against the background of a whole load of other um, work that's going on at the moment. We're involved in projects such as Merge Greenwich, Streetwise, and Driven, all of which are seeking to create the opportunity to put um, uh, autonomous vehicles onto the road and onto the road rather than shared space environments um, and create uh, um, an, a better understanding of the types of use cases and the type of business cases that those autonomous vehicles can support. 
I'd just give you an example of some of the things Tim was talking about um, with, the, with the, the pod type systems. We've been developing uh, the gateway pod using the uh, vehicle that was uh, developed for use at Heathrow uh, Airport, the uh, Terminal 5, uh, for a number of years now. We've done a number of different uh, evaluations of that vehicle, both in off-road and, and uh, shared space environments in live environments, working with our uh, partners on the Gateway Project and in Digital Greenwich. And this is all about creating vehicle solutions that are spatially efficient, they're uh, lower energy, they're potentially safer uh, in operation in the real-world environment. And, they're accessible, they're, they're responsive, and, and, and ultimately cost-effective to be used. But the use cases for these types of vehicles are you know, quite, quite challenging to understand. What, how are we going to best use these vehicles to achieve those aims? Where, where do people really want to, um, uh, or where, where are we going to get the most value by deploying these into the public environment? And the diagram here uh, provided by our colleagues in Greenwich really represents you know, one vision about that, you know, one vision around how uh, you use these types of technologies to draw people into existing transport hubs to, to, to optimize the, the, the performance of the existing transport network while also providing greater connectivity to mobility. That's just one vision of, of, of how you could use that. But of course, what we want to ensure is whatever we do within a city environment is complementary to our existing transport options, both active transport and public transport. And it integrates with any kind of future uh, development we have that joins up those uh, modes in uh, mobility as a service type approach. So our vision around the Living Lab is really to create an environment where we're stimulating growth in uh, transport that is zero emission, it's safer, we're creating standards that uh, support the introduction of these technologies, it's, it's uh, accessible, it's efficient, that it's being led by the, 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 the customers at the end that are going to actually be use, using these types of uh, technology. So we're, we're creating uh, methods to both deploy these technologies and generate the feedback on their, um, uh, on their suitability and the appropriateness of the types of services that they provide. And that can only really, really be achieved in a real-world test bed. We want to create innovation and we want to create uh, uh, IP in doing that and lead it from a technology, uh, from an independent and technology agnostic uh, perspective. And that involves being collaborative, it means working with uh, small businesses, it means accelerating um, startups, um, and it means taking that um, capability that we de uh, deliver and taking it to a worldwide stage and exporting that knowledge, whilst also building the skills and the, the capability base in the UK. So what really sits at the heart of uh, the, the Living Lab concept is this um, ability to be able to take pre-user technologies and we'll test those pre-user technologies through alpha testing. So this is uh, uh, technologies such as the, uh, the pod that I've just shown the video of and the, the types of pods that, that Tim was talking about uh, just now. And, and working with the development of those pods, working or, or vehicle-based systems, M1 category vehicles, the type of passenger cars that we work with today, uh, and, and enhancing the development of those systems, in increasing the speed at which those systems are developed potentially, and then providing ways to uh, evaluate and test uh, those systems in real-world conditions to give us uh, um, uh, elements of, or levels of assurance about uh, vehicle performance in the real world. And then beta testing is, is around the user interaction with those kinds of technologies. So we not only want to stimulate the testing and development of the technology themselves, but then how that's deployed, how users interact with that technologies, and how those technologies ultimately deliver the benefits that we're looking for from uh, these types of transport systems. Um, the Living Lab it will be centered around uh, Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park and the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Uh, both really interesting for different reasons. Um, Queen Elizabeth Park, a very open environment, um, a relatively quiet environment for a city centre, and not a bad place to set, uh, start out uh, autonomous vehicles testing in a real-world environment because it's, it's a relatively simple uh, environment and good place to start from an infrastructure point of view as well. And then you come into much more complicated areas like the Borough of Greenwich where we have um, areas that are, uh, you know, experience very high uh, inward flows in relation to uh, events such as the uh, O2 arena. Uh, we have areas of um, uh, quite traditionally poorly served um, uh, residential area like Thamesmead, number two. We have very complex historical uh, areas with, with convoluted road networks 
uh, in, in the, the main town centre of Greenwich. And we also have some really key strategic commuter routes that are going in and out of that area, uh, which link to areas like the A2M2 connected corridor. So uh, a, 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 an area rich with possibilities in terms of uh, test and evaluation uh, and deployment of mobility solutions. So what we're looking to do with um, our, our key customer segments then is create a, a set of uh, capabilities that are really ad addressing a range of, of, of needs within um, customer groups like OEMs, automotive supply chain, technology companies that are uh, creating these um, technologies in some cases uh, from scratch, uh, working with transport, uh, existing transport uh, providers and authorities, uh, financial services, we talked about insurers have been mentioned a couple of times already. Um, these uh, developments pose potentially quite significant uh, disruptive impacts on their, their industry. Um, with academia uh, and then with city designers and planners. All of, I mean, those are examples of the types of um, stakeholders that uh, the, 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 the opportunity within Smart Mobility Living Lab uh, is created to better understand the impact and the opportunity of these uh, new technologies. And then what we're doing within, uh, as, as services within that, uh, within that customer group are areas like the uh, Connected Autonomous Vehicle Technology uh, and User Verification and Validation, which is absolutely key to being, having trust in these uh, technologies as they hit the road. Um, development of, of real-world trials, deployment, demonstration, uh, experience for the uh, users of those technologies creating toolkits around accessible uh, technology platforms and data services, developing the standards and data um, uh, and the approval uh, methodologies that are going to be needed in order to take uh, the vehicles into the real world uh, and uh, deliver viable use cases and, and business models. And then perform a bit of a backdrop as well for, um, for the, the promotion uh, and the deployment of um, vehicle solutions to a worldwide audience. And in doing that, working with industry specifically to um, uh, create an environment where uh, private research and development can be done, creating these, these infrastructures that allow us to uh, speed up uh, the, the, the development of uh, automated vehicle technologies or mobility solutions. We're also recognizing that there's a very wide range of stakeholders um, out there that don't have the um, access to technology or uh, um, collaboration capability to, uh, to actually get involved in these, these types of projects uh, and really develop the understanding that might be benefiting their organization. And so we're putting together a, a shared research program where multiple partners are going to be investing in that uh, program to undertake new um, uh, R&D projects uh, within usually using this uh, investment uh, in the Living Lab capability. And that's going to be focusing areas on areas such as the alpha and the beta testing that I talked about, the safety and security of using these types of uh, automated uh, transport systems in the real world, um, smart infrastructure how, uh, and, and systems, how they are integrated uh, into, into future services and business models, the policy and regulation that's ultimately going to limit or, or enable uh, the deployment of those uh, systems. Um, the visualization and modeling, modeling particularly important to model a business case or model a city scale impact of the, the growth of a particular type of uh, service. Um, and also, really importantly, then looking at how the consumer is brought along uh, on the journey and the consumer is able to um, have, have evidence and information about the, the way in which different types of solutions will deliver to their needs. And that might, for example, include things like licensing tests for, uh, for vehicles in which we're able to actually see the different way in which uh, a, a particular automated vehicle solution uh, performs given a, se a certain sequence of uh, requirements to be undertaken in the real world. Um, there's also uh, opportunities there around the knowledge we learn, using that knowledge around consultancy uh, and um, uh, training and education in order to support that skill set growth uh, within uh, the UK as well. As I said, we're working with a really strong uh, team to put together the, the infrastructure of this uh, Living Lab environment. And I'm going to hand over to uh, Artie from Costain to take you through their role. Thanks, Ewan. That was a, a very useful overview of the testbed. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I am Artie Gupta, and I'm Costain's project lead on this fantastic opportunity. 
I want to talk to you about three key discussion points around our involvement and role within the testbed. One, looking at how Costain has been involved in the constantly evolving nature of the highways landscape. Two, how we continue to shape, define, and deliver integrated solutions to drive forward connectivity onto the roads network. And three, discuss the huge range of opportunities which we see will come through the delivery of this testbed. So to begin with, I want to just briefly provide an overview on how we've shared the journey with development in highways. We've been there at the inception of roads where there's a rapid shift from horse and carriage through to vehicle on the roads, and this was perpetuated by the Industrial Revolution which took place at the turn of the 20th century. Very quickly, this transformed into established road networks across the country in the form of managed motorways, which has then paved the way for smart motorways, which is what we're all more familiar with in terms of what we use. And I think it's over here where we have recognized that roads are far more than just putting down tarmac, but it's about how we can assimilate the knowledge that we have and integrate this technology, a multitude of it, in order to drive forward smart and efficient solutions for the road network. This then brings us toward the future, and this is about how can we bring in connectivity to the existing infrastructure while combining the emerging CAV technologies we're seeing. And I think we're poised at a point in not just highways, but the overall mobility infrastructure for a very rapid and transformational shift in the infrastructure. Certainly, this is more so because of the huge advancements that we've seen in technology, which have been the most accelerated than in any other period of the last 100 years or so. And here at Costain, what we believe is that we can play a pivotal role within this wider ecosystem because the changes that will come from emerging technologies are dynamic, they're vast. I'm not sure we all understand what they might be and how they'll deliver change, but it'll have implications not just for the way we view and define our solutions, but also it'll impact a lot of our daily lives. So the way we live and commute to and from work, some of our daily activities like shopping or choosing what mode of transport we want to take for our social lives. It also has wider implications for the, the national platform and the environment in which we live and indeed the fabric of society. So it's integrating all those various components and we bring to this our knowledge of the asset being the road combined with our understanding of the users of the asset, i.e. the different types of vehicles. And the final component of this is the deployment of technologies which underpin this asset. So this hopefully reflects how we're ideally positioned to be able to bring in our expertise in the delivery of roads and wider infrastructure projects together with specialist roadside technologies to really enable and facilitate the delivery of integrated technology so that we can accelerate CAV to the market. This then takes me on to my final area, which is the delivery of this testbed offers invaluable sets of opportunities. Not least of all, it's very exciting for us to be able to collaborate with such an eminent set of partners. We very much look forward to being able to share our synergies and to work collectively to develop a lot of these technologies. So some of the things we're focusing our work on internally is looking at information systems management. So looking at message signs on the roads today and how these will need to adapt and evolve. Looking at how lighting levels may need to be adjusted, for example. We're also investigating how traffic flow management systems would need to change. So this is looking at how we can optimize existing technology to better capture the data which is generated from the road and then the vehicle and how we can manage this and disseminate it back to the road and vehicle. We're also then looking closely at how the physical structure of roads will need to change. So perhaps the, the lanes will need to become narrower in width to cater for different sized calves. 
or we will need to think about alternative refueling options for electric vehicles. So there's a whole host of activities which we are undertaking. And in being involved with a testbed, this is a great platform for us to test and validate these technologies and to share these learnings with the wider community to make sure that we're part of the evolving solution. We want to carry on being part of our customer's journey and meeting the changing customer requirements. And not just the customer, but our partners, national needs and society as a whole. We also see this as a fantastic business opportunity and keen to use this as a platform to attract further investment. We need the great minds within our community to engage with us and help us integrate mobility as a whole and then think about defining the future as an integrated service of all the things various people have talked about here today. Ultimately, our role is to enable, facilitate and deploy these technologies and work with our partners to understand how we can best deliver that. There'll be a very rich amount of research and development which will be generated from the testbed and we're keen to test roads for tomorrow today within this environment and share these with you when the time comes. And finally, on a more personal note, I am very excited for CAV technology to become a part of my day-to-day -day life. Hopefully, it'll stop me receiving various parking fines in London, the last of which I've yet to share with my husband. So that's my next challenge. Um, but thank you very much for your time and attention today. And I'm going to pass on to Peter. Peter Sherman. I am Head of Innovation Delivery for uh, Cisco in the UK. Um, Cisco is a, a non-standard participant at a Highways UK event. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with us, um, we are a, a technolo multinational technology company, uh, about 70,000 uh, people worldwide. Um, and switching, routing, connectivity, compute, those are our, our, our core areas of interest. Um, we already play um, a, a fairly uh, significant role in, in providing the, the connectivity solutions of today for roadside and for vehicles. Um, we, uh, we connect around, uh, I think, about 24 million vehicles uh, connected through the Cisco Jasper uh, platform uh, worldwide. Um, but in the UK, we have a really strong focus on, on innovation. Uh, so we have about 3,000 people in the UK, and 2,500 of those are our smartest engineers who just sit around thinking stuff up, thinking about how they can use technology to address any problem they can get their hands on. And, and what's what our innovation program within the UK allows us to do is to pair that creativity, that drive, with SME creativity. I should say, I can see myself on this screen. Can, you, can we turn that off? <laughs> Thank you. Um, we partner our, uh, our exceptional uh, engineering force in the UK uh, with creative SMEs, partners, customers, uh, to, to build new things, to come up with new ideas and, and new ways of doing. And, uh, we're delighted to be part of the of the, the, C of the, uh, the SMLL testbed, um, uh, which uh, is uh, it, we're interested in that from from both a technology perspective. Uh, we're really interested to see how we can use that to test out new technology concepts and ideas, uh, new means of connectivity, uh, new new applications. We're also really interested in in the business development side of that and of the commercialisation of those ideas. And uh, Cisco has a, has a very strong track record in, in disruption, in bringing digital into areas where it hasn't been before, of empowering the companies to come in and change the way a market and a sector works and operates. And we think that actually we can play a strong role in how we do that for, uh, for mobility, for mobility today. Um, we have a number of projects already underway that... Uh, uh, we, can, we can get into uh, uh, later on how you create those new mobility solutions uh, for the future. Um, but quite often with, with the ideas that we create, you need, a, you need, a, we, you need someone who's able to, able to take that risk and take on, a, take on a vested interest, take on a sector, find a way to penetrate a market and generate value off the back of it. And we think that's something that we, can, uh, that we want to bring to the UK ecosystem. Uh, because the UK has some fabulous assets uh, when it comes to technology and creativity, uh, and also to its openness to adoption, to how you, how you take on new technologies and, and new concepts. Uh, in, in any sort of consumer electronics uh, uh, marketplace, 
the UK is where you come to to test out the market first before you then move on to European markets uh, uh, and, uh, and others. So we can harness that. We can harness the, the willingness to adopt, the willingness to accept new, uh, along with the creativity uh, and, the, and the investment that you can find within the UK, within the UK ecosystem. Um, and it's a, it's a really uh, it's a strange thing because for, 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 for forever, telecommunications and transport have essentially shared a common language. Uh, we all talk about connectivity, about traffic, and so on. Uh, and now we're going to get to a point where actually route optimization problems uh, are the same whether it's a bit or a car. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, and that, that, that convergence of ubiquitous connectivity, ubiquitous computing, uh, and, uh, uh, and transportation actually bringing that together physically creates a whole bunch of opportunity that we are really, really excited about. Um, and it's an opportunity as well that, that isn't just for the future, it's actually for the now. Uh, so that, the bit that we're, uh, we're as interested in the, in the C as we are in the A. Uh, so the, the connected, the opportunity that, that creates today is substantial, significant. Um, we're already finding new ways of doing, new ways of, uh, of creating off the back of that. Um, uh, and that provides a very strong drive for getting going as quickly as we can to make sure that the UK ecosystem is growing and capturing that opportunity. We'll open to questions. Uh, Ryan Hood from TRL. Can you just say a little bit uh, something about uh, 5G and the role of the Living Lab? Can I start off quickly on that and then Peter hand over? Um, so, Part of the uh, objective of the Living Lab is to create a, uh, an environment which is uh, uh, scalable in terms of the, the technologies that it, 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 it uses. And in terms of 5G, we're part with exactly the right people um, in terms of uh, uh, the Royal Borough of Greenwich, um, who uh, have been working for a number of years uh, on establishing Greenwich as, a, as, a, as an early adopter in the 5G program. Um, so we know that there's uh, 5G um, uh, innovation funding uh, from central government um, over the next uh, year or so, uh, and we expect that to form part of the, the uh, SMLL program as it goes forward. So we, we absolutely expect 5G to become embedded in the, the capability and the fundamental infrastructure that uh, the Living Lab provides. And um, some, some of the, some, what's, what's really exciting about 5G is the, is the way that, that some of the the, the characteristics of that 5G are going to give you things around identity and seamless transitioning between networks and, and the high latency are going to address su uh, low latency, I should say, high throughput, low latency, are going to address a lot of those issues that we heard in the earlier sessions. Um, it's going to provide uh, a, a whole new means of, uh, of, of connecting everywhere. So that, well, that's going to need a new type of business model for, for telecommunications generally, and that's the sort of thing again that would be really interesting to, to test out, um, uh, test out down in the down in the test bed because you're going to need uh, some very different constructs of, of the value chain of, of that connectivity if you're going to start to do that on the roadside, which has a very different dynamic to providing mobile comms generally. But the opportunities that 5G creates through the way it's going to be rearchitected are really really interesting. Hi, Rebecca Sarouche from Peer Consulting. Um, I was just wondering, you were talking about sort of the changes to the network, to the actual roads, um, other than maybe the 5G network. W what are the typical changes that we need to expect on the network? That's a really good question and very broad. Um, I, think, I think to look at it simply, it's looking at, certainly within costing, we're focusing on things as simple as message signs. So these will need to rapidly evolve and shift in terms of it's not just about speaking to the road and sending information back to that. OK, oh, I'll try. <laughs> Hopefully, did that answer your question? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but yes, yeah, sorry, coming back to where I was. But it's looking at those simple sort of changes that we take for granted when we're on the road, so message signs, how that data is captured and then sent back to not just the, the road now, but to the user and, and the vehicle itself. So those sorts of things. And I think what's very interesting about the, this testbed is being able to test and validate technology in a complex urban environment. And that's going to be very interesting because if you think about the, comple the complexity of the different transport modes within London, for example, and how people will adjust to a cab 
being on the road and vice versa? What are the response times? So it's all of those things and making sure that we have a 360 degree angle of capturing that to monitor, to provide that safety. And then more broadly, it's addressing issues like reducing congestion, improving capacity on the roads and improving road safety. So these are all really big questions. And I think part of today, for me anyway, is also appealing to the wider community. We need that innovative thinking. We need a way of bringing together so many different thoughts and into one sort of coherent solution. And we need to integrate what we already know, knowledge, and the deployment of technology to get there. So I hope that's answered your question somewhat. I have another one, actually. <laughs> so would you expect that um, autonomous vehicles or the, the aspect of autonomous vehicles will be accelerated on the SRN, for example, as opposed to urban areas, so that you could potentially switch or take off your hands on a motorway, but then when you come into the city, because it's complexer, you would have to start driving again. Is that? I, th I think we're uh, looking at yeah, quite fundamentally different use cases when you're looking at driving on uh, in highway environments, as you say, much simpler environments as opposed to driving in um, very complex uh, urban environments. I think part of the reason why we're interested in, in urban environments is that level of complexity, as Asi was just, was just talking about. If you can do it in uh, very complex urban environments, um, then you might be able to do it in, in simpler environments uh, as well. Certainly, that would be a, uh, uh, a, uh, one way in which we'd expect the, the, the technology to, to permeate out of more complex regions into, into less complex regions. Um, but uh, we, we also, we, we, you know, we talked about insurers earlier, and you know, insurers have got a really important role here to play in terms of where they uh, kind of uh, maybe allow or, or are prepared to insure uh, vehicles to be driven autonomously. Um, and there might be some lower risk environments uh, where that ability to ensure uh, happens more quickly than in, in uh, uh, more complex environments. And, but I think this is one of the reasons why we need an environment in order to be able to do that testing, do that evaluation, do that, um, uh, the, the, go through the stages of um, uh, getting to a point where a, a vehicle can be, or a, a technology can be um, accepted or approved for operation in, in, in certain environments. And, and that's equally as... as uh, um, true for the highway environment as it is uh, in the urban environment as well. I think the, the urban the urban question the, that the urban question is is really important because if, if 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 the first thing we do is make the highways more efficient, we can make the cities far worse. If the M4 gets any more efficient, then no one is moving anywhere in West London any time before midday. So we that hints that but that. That is such a more complex question. It's not just a technology question. There's a whole business model question, the city plan question around that. And, and there's a transition question as well about how you, how you get from here to there and when you're going to have an entire legacy environment with you know, the mixed ecology of vehicles. Uh, and that, that, that's going to need a lot of transition around the roadside and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we're going to need to do. So um, hence why the, the focus on, on urban is, is, is really important, actually, as a, as a, as a sector. Thanks very much uh, to you and Artie and Peter. The fascinating presentation. It sounds like a great project. I'm uh, afraid we have to end it there as we have two more, two more sessions on this stage, but please put, your, please put your hands together for them. <laughs>